First diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome at the age of 18 by a gynecologist over the phone. That is what I was told. You have PCOS, PC, he actually said polycystic ovarian disease, and you're probably never going to have children. So that's your diagnosis. And I said, okay, is there anything else that I need to know? And I was really startled actually, because um, he was clearly, you know, um, an old fashioned um, clinician who ultimately gave me this news over the phone and used the word disease. And I was thinking, gosh, the first thing that I thought wasn't even what he had said, which is you're probably never gonna have children. The first thing I thought was, am I gonna die? You know, and I was really taken aback. I was really shocked. And then I started to think about what that actually meant. <laughs> and the more that I pondered and considered it, I thought, okay, well, you know, I was doing naturopathic training at the time. And I thought, okay, if I don't have children, I probably will have more time to help other people. And, uh, and that was kind of how I approached it. Fast forward 15 years later, I had met someone who I wanted to have children with and we decided to start trying. And what was interesting about that is that I conceived first try. And the reason was because I actually had become one of my patients. I was practicing what I preached. I was helping myself in the same way that I helped thousands of other people do exactly the same. So the long and the short story is that there is so much more that you can do to help yourself no matter the diagnosis you know from PCOS insert anything else and as it comes to fertility and in this day and age there are things you can do you know often I even talk about you know there are very complex situations that we treat for the patients in our clinic and sometimes we might need to go as far as surrogacy and you know, there are things that essentially we cannot change. However, it does not mean that it's the end of the road. I often say to my patients, if you really truly want to have a baby and you're willing to put in enough time, energy, effort and money, this day is the day, you know, era that that's possible. So it's about figuring out how do we do it. Now, in terms of PCOS specifically, there are so many things. I often talk about the concept of acting pregnant now to get pregnant later. And really think about it from the perspective of, you know, if you were pregnant right now, if you were given the wonderful news that you were holding the healthy baby of your dreams in your womb in this moment, what would you absolutely start doing and or stop doing to give yourself the best possible chance? And I'm not talking about those women who think, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying that, you know, there is this kind of mindset that some women have that are like, you know, all of a sudden pregnant, KFC is going to be my diet, you know, laden with chocolate chip ice cream and, you know, whatever else. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is nurturing and nourishing your body in exactly the same way that you would want your newborn child to be nourished, right? Because we all want the best for our children. We want to make sure that they're healthy and happy and, and develop well. Well, that begins way before a pregnancy is even in place. Right, so by eight weeks gestation, a baby already has all its little fingerprints, all its little organs formed. And really from there, what it does is grow, which means that our beginning predisposition in terms of our health and, and health predispositions in the future actually are set in place that early, which means that in order to make a difference to having the healthiest possible pregnancy and the healthiest possible baby, that work begins months, sometimes even years before a pregnancy is even a thought in your mind. And that's really how I approached it. You know, when I was diagnosed at 18, I thought, okay, what is it that I need to do to nurture and nourish my body in the best possible way? When I met my husband, we had been together for eight years before we decided, yes, this is, you know, what I want to do. And in that time, certainly early on, there had been periods of two years that I hadn't, didn't have a cycle. So I knew that there was work to be done and I started doing that work very, very slowly because I didn't really have a need to rush, but it was something that I started to focus on and you know, really work toward. So much so that when we actually decided to have a baby, it was literally one try. And that really is what happens you know, at peak fertility. A couple has on average, 
three months time to pregnancy. It's literally have sex, get pregnant, have a baby. We're no longer having this conversation. When we are still having this conversation is because there are pieces that haven't yet been figured out that need to be worked on. Even though PCOS is considered to be the top cause of infertility in women of the reproductive age, it is manageable, it can be addressed and it can be changed. The key is to know exactly what to do. And the power begins with you. So get up, get on it and get started. Of course, always here to help and to support. More than happy to have a complimentary conversation if needed. Until next time, bye for now.